as you can see the DPM is working really well on this tank and that's what this tank is all about the DPM it doesn't really excel at anything other than DPM uh, the accuracy values are not bad once again as I have said and can we pick up the VZ? Yes, he can. World of Tanks A to Z. And today we are going to be taking a look at the AMX-30B, one of the French collector vehicles that is ready for purchase if you own some of the French top tanks. And guys, this is gonna be interesting. Stay tuned. <laughs> have the abix 30 b tier 10 french medium tank sniper let's go quickly through the all the stats and before i show you the banger replay from ihas uh 4.1 thousand dpm that's very good for 390 alpha damage it's probably one of the best in the game i think it's even better than the stb1 uh, as a matter of fact uh let's talk about the shell types 1100 velocity meters per second 248 apcr that is just not gonna cut it in tier 10 the velocity is really bad some of the some of the tanks with AP shells actually have better velocity than this tank with APCR. 248mm of penetration is also kind of low. Uh, the heat shells are 300 penetration, which is also very, very low for tier 10. And 800 velocity, which is absolutely brutal. It's going to be kind of useful at close range, but you're going to be struggling panning those shots that you would with other medium tanks of the same tier. Now, as for equipment, you have multiple choices. You can play with verse steps or with uh, improved aiming unit, the bounty improved aiming unit. But I honestly chose the bounty improved aiming unit because as you can see, it gives you a massive dispersion buff. 0 0.03, which is really, really useful actually. And I, I wholeheartedly recommend this because as you can see, the dispersion factors are actually quite good. So you're not going to be needing that uh, verse steps and rather hit those shots reliably at longer distances than... Uh, then snapshot on the move uh with coffee uh also i will need to select the the crew skills here uh, repairs concealment uh, all these kind of blue skills for the for the shooters uh off-road driving and situational awareness uh rammer directive also for field mods if you have them all researched uh take the left one here for uh, minus 20 percent dispersion of a damage gun and minus 50 percent ammo rec penalty and, and damage engine penalty here you take the improved aiming side, which gives you a little bit of edge on the dispersion uh, values. Here, uh, the next three upgrades, I actually don't think any of them are good. Uh, I honestly didn't take any of them. If you want to, if you want to have more sniping capabilities, you can take this one, for example, aiming mechanism tuning, but it costs you some DPM and reload, so I don't really recommend that because DPM is the only thing that this tank actually truly has. I really didn't like playing this tank. Uh, I'm going to show you a banger replay, which was really, really good, and how this tank should be played. Uh, I didn't like this tank because of the lack of pan, the lack of velocity. Um, and this accuracy might seem good, but in, in reality, it's really not that good. Uh, over here, you also have plus 5% engine power at the cost of aiming speed. You could take this, actually, if you want to get into positions faster. But I honestly didn't take any of them when I was playing it. Uh, it's not really needed. Um, now let's talk about the, the weapon stats again. 1.73 aiming time, that's very good for a tier 10 medium tank. 0 0.28 dispersion, that's okay. Uh, and that's all with, with all these field mods and, and all these kind of uh, equipment that I have. Otherwise the, the, the gun is going to be pretty bad as you can see. It's 0 0.35 which, which is basically just worse than, than the Leo. And I like to compare this tank uh, between the Leo and the STB1 because this tank kind of plays uh between those two tanks it has the dpm but it doesn't really have the accuracy and the kind of apcr that the leo one has but it also doesn't really have the hold on capabilities of the stv one which can dish out lots of lots of damage in quite a short amount of time now as i mentioned dispersion values are pretty good um it has 50 ammunition which is not going to be a problem either 65 top speed that's very healthy 23 reverse speed that's also very healthy 21 power to rate ratio that's also really good uh, the turn resistances are brilliant. Um, 8 degrees of gun depression. Now, 8 degrees of gun depression with that kind of turret, you're going to be struggling quite a lot on some positions. The STB1 does not, and that's why the STB1 is just the ultimate top 1 tier 10 medium tank. So, about the armor model. You have a huge, huge, out of this sort, gigantic cupola, which is really, really easy to hit, and it's going to be an auto pen for anything that hits it. You have a quite a bouncy mantlet actually, going from 300 
up to even like 500 at some places, which is quite, quite bouncy. You don't really want to aim for this. Uh, it's going to bounce those shots, especially APCR. Heat, not so much, but uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty good, but people are going to be shooting that cupola because if you're even, even if you're playing cooldown, that cupola is visible and so are the cheeks here and you definitely want to hit these uh, on the side. Now, the armor actually, as you can see, against APCR, you have some troll angles, which will make, make an auto bounce. Uh, if the enemy is shooting APC at you, AP is not going to have that much uh, much bounces, but uh, this kind of angling actually is quite good. Lower plate is very weak, and the whole side is just going to be pretty much auto pen. Uh, it's very paper from the side, very paper from the back, easily penetrable with HE shells. Uh, against, against heat uh, shells, however, this tank absolutely has no chance of uh, bouncing pretty much anything. The tank has 1900 HP, uh, it's kind of okay, I guess. Some tanks have more, some tanks have less. The camo values are quite okay, nothing special, honestly, 31% on stationary and 23% moving. But you have also really, really good view range, 481, and you can actually use this to outspot light tanks, spot enemy TDs that are camping behind bushes, and, and just basically spot moving tanks at quite, quite uh, high ranges. And it's pretty good. Let's actually show you a banger replay, guys. You're gonna enjoy this. Stay tuned. So here we are on Lakeville, and as you can see, Isha Stellon, sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, or Isha Stellon, I think he's French. Uh, he is actually running verse tabs instead of IAU. That's personal choice once again. I like my accuracy more than, uh, than verse tabs. I've been kind of removing verse tabs from all my tanks uh, recently, replacing them with Turbo or HP. It seems to be working off. And we are playing Lakeville, and the MM is actually fairly heavy with tier 10 tanks. And... We have two light tanks on each side, and let's see what Ichaz is gonna or Isha is gonna do here. I'm just call, I'm just gonna call him E. And the Vetchet already drowns himself in the enemy team. And let's see how many guys we can snipe here. As I have mentioned, the velocity are very bad on these shells, and kind of have to lead very very far actually, especially heat rounds, but also AP. And the Leo actually gets tracked in the middle of there. We connect three on him. That's really really good. Uh, with the lack of penetration, you want to get into these positions and try to basically shoot those lightly armored vehicles. As you can see, he actually bounces a gorilla shot on the turret, so those troll angles actually kind of work on the mantlet. I really didn't like this tank because I just I just couldn't really find my place to go. Like you go into a hold down position, you get shot in the cupola, uh, but it's it's probably going to be a very very good game for me to actually watch and learn also. How to play this tank because i was not sure now we have some really really good marksmanship coming in from from e and it's uh actually three two already and he's just staying put in this position waiting for enemy tanks to make those mistakes uh, and try to get into this fire line that he has set up with the friendly tvp and the ebr actually goes down the friendly ebr towards the vz and now there are no light tanks on his team but let's see, the enemy has still two lightnings, and those lightnings are going to be trying to play aggressively, uh, I believe. And there it is, the VZ actually gets spotted right there, connects shot, beautiful, 4-3-3 roll into him, and the guy is dead, because he has been set on fire by the Crown Wagon and absolutely finished off. And now, there is an opening on the 1-2 line. He sees that there are three tanks that are unspotted, the 60 TP, the Ice Fur, and the s -Conk. And as you can see, the accuracy kind of worked out this game so far, um, along with the DPM uh, absolutely wrecked this Leo one in the beginning for 1200 HP. Really, really good play there. And now we're gonna make uh, his way towards the 1-2 line and let's, let's see what is going to be uh, waiting for him there. Uh, once again, there's a 6 TP unspotted, the eyes were unspotted and the two of the TDs, the STR in the gorilla. And the VZ actually gets spotted right there. Beautiful shot into his lower plate. He had no time to react. But now he has really, really uh, has to hide those cupolas that he has, and uh, now the VC probably has the big gun. He shot once, but but this DPM is just absolutely diminishing his target. And as you can see, once again, excellent marksmanship coming in, connecting all those shots and penetrating him all the way, putting him up to 3.7 thousand damage. Really, really good play. And the FE actually also gets spotted STRV and the Ice for two Ice for camping in the corner. And the FE just makes it back in time behind the coverage. But this position is really, really good. I think it's very, very underrated and often overlooked where he is right now. And the FE carelessly peeks in there and he gets completely diminished by artillery and him. 
picking up 900 uh, assistance damage and you can see that the IS-4 is not in the proxy range so he can actually just use this bush to his advantage and uh, shoot this STRV unspotted of course when he shoots he gets spotted but before that the STRV has no time to react and that was a uh, that was an unlucky shot uh, taken in from the STRV um, the VZ however is still on the right side and he has to kill him there as you can see the DPM is working really well on this tank and that's what this tank is all about the DPM it doesn't really excel at anything other than DPM uh, the accuracy values are not bad once again as I have said and can we pick up the VZ yes he can uh, now the situation is fairly simple there's an IS4 and the STRV there the STRV gets spotted right there and let's see if you can actually connect the first one into his lower plate unlucky miss coming in there right there but the good thing about this tank once again is that you can actually compete with the dpm the insane dpm that the strv has and look at him shot for shot the str is actually bouncing because he's hitting the upper uh, edge of the turret which is going to be an auto bounce and ishaz is playing really really well here and aiming his shots very well onto the str's lower plate which he is going to pan with heat and now the M60 actually pushes up on the right side and the RT also gets spotted. He gets distracted for a little bit and he gets an unlucky bounce once again onto the STRV. And let's see, the K line seems to have been occupied by the enemy tanks. There is still 13,000 HP. Of course, there's a lot of tanks that we do not see how much HP they have. And he actually picks up the STRV. Beautiful shot right there. The 261 barely makes it back into cover and the M60 completely overcommits here and he is going to be open for uh, Ish has to actually shoot him there and he has really good position to actually farm him there M60 misses, he has the reload on him he can easily pick this and actually shoot him as you can see once again the DPM is just absolutely massive here and it actually works I think the M60 fired a, a shot of frustration into the eyes for there that's why he turned but he is not going to be safe because he has the gigantic cupola which uh, Ish has is gonna ca capitalize on very well here and he actually picks him up now the is4 is only going to have the gorilla potentially to cover him and the 261 now i'm not sure how much hp the gorilla has but uh he can actually also just push the is4 here if the tvp helps him out and the gorilla gets gets spotted beautiful hg round into the gorilla's lower plate and the gorilla basically will have just no time to react because he's behind the bush he's behind cover and as, as soon as he gets unspotted, he's going to put another one into the gorilla and he's just not going to know. And he's not going to have, have a reaction for this. 8.4 thousand damage, ladies and gentlemen. And it's 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 really, really incredible how, how much DPM this tank actually has. And if it actually works out and you have really good aim and it, they, you, you hit all these shots and all these very, very thinly armored targets come into play, which you don't need penetration for, this tank can actually work its charms. Now the gorilla gets picked up by the RT. We are above 9,000 damage, 1,600 blocks, which is actually pretty impressive for this tank. It doesn't really bounce that often. And the RT did not really move there. And the first shot connects onto the 261. And the IS-4 is also down to a one shot. And he actually picks him up. Very well placed shot there. And I probably the Centurion AX will get picked up by the remainder of the friendly team on the zero line. Now, the 261 is a one shot. He'll pick him up as well but overall 9700 damage ladies and gents in seven minutes that is what i call a really really great result and ishaz actually shows that why he has one of the best dpgs and best statistics on the european server very well aimed shot once again and let's see if he can actually pick up the sixth skill getting a top gun medal yes he does beautiful play thank you so much for uploading this replay to what replace so guys as you can see the mx 30 b can actually work its way and get a lot of damage because of the the absolutely enormous and gigantic dpm it has although it's going to struggle against heavily armored targets because of the lack of penetration also going to be having problems when you're uh, at longer ranges and you're trying to hit those fast targets because of the lack of velocity but if you can get into those early positions and farm some damage and get into those hold-down positions with bushes and, and all the all the cover you can see that this tank is pretty pretty decent I, i'm not i'm never gonna like this tank honestly i'm just an stb1 fan sorry but if you guys want to try it out you can buy this in the in the world of tanks shop for credits if you own a tier 10 french tank uh, i believe and thank you guys so much for watching the video if you liked it please like comment and subscribe
and I'll see you next time.